you, you are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Let's discover how a couple of months, but it's this, this, this enough for you to know what's up in the hood. I've always known I was different. I've never exactly fit in. Is it the clothes I wear? Been this way all my life. If I were to compare myself to something, it would be art. Weird and different like me. Art is not just pen and pencil, mindless lines and strokes. Art is an expression, feeling and emotion. The Cloud Gate downtown was a British sculpture and East Kapoor's first outdoor piece. It was meant to mirror the Chicago skylines and was shockingly inspired by liquid mercury. I was looking at the cloud gate one day, like I do every Tuesday, and I met someone. I don't know, but I call him Bark. After that, we kind of started touring the city together. Just a couple of steps away was Crown Fountain, so we decided to go. Crown Fountain is a great example of interactive art and fits into an uncommon category of video sculpture. Jaume Plenza has promoted interactions between people and water, distinguishing Crown Fountain from Chicago's and many other fountains. Plenza had been working with dualism for a long time, but he had also wanted to introduce the use of video technology, seen in some of his previous pieces. With doing so, he had hoped to overcome the obstacles of creating an interactive relationship between the viewers and the art and was amazed to discover he had achieved that when it became a public water park for children within the hours of opening. Our last destination was a sculpture on the Bloomingdale Trail called Brick House. It was completely made out of recycled rubber tires and stainless steel. Its creator, Chikaya Booker, meant to combine ecological concerns with racial and economic differences, globalization, and gender. While we were at Brick House, Bark noticed something sticking out from within a spiral. It was a person. It also shared the same passion Bark and I have for art, so it joined us. Now that I think about it, I may not be as alone as I thought I was. I mean, even the creators of the public art piece I mentioned earlier experience a lot of judgment concerning their work, so maybe I'm simply looking at the downside of things. After going to several public exhibits, I've met people who like me for me. I guess we're all a little different. There are a lot of people around the city who hope to share their aspirations who are not known to many, and despite that, they still aim to create their art. Uh, my dad was really talented. Um, he used to paint motorcycles, and he kind of like instilled this whole like, uh, like be a good draftsman, good work, like things need to make sense, like, um, and that kind of just like radiated, and I kind of pursued it from there, and kept drawing, and kept working, and went to school, and then from there, uh, I actually started working at ASM as an intern, and then my career kind of just went from there. Uh, I guess uh, I got involved in art uh, early on, uh, being uh, poor as hell in the hood uh, with nothing, and you had to like just you know crayons and paint and markers, and and you just express yourself on the street, and uh, um, that's how I, it wasn't art; it was just expression. You know, I didn't know it was art until someone told me it was art. Man. <laughs> um, I, you know, it breaks down to like designers, they design buildings, there's murals, there's color, there's like all these things that maybe you don't think about every day, but all these things are thought out and they're usually behind it is a creative person. And it's just me as a creative person, I would want to see more of that and more and like more people to be excited about it or like community projects or things that just sort of bring people together. And then you look and you're like, wow, that's nice. It's, uh, it's great to see something that kind of inspires people to be like, man, I could probably do something like that. I think Chicago is my most influence. This is the city where I live. This is the city where I play. This is the city where uh, I laugh and cry. Um, um, 
it, it, a lot of my artwork is a representation, is a uh, expression of, of how I live in the city. So I think the city is a big part of, of, of my art. It's, it's a way to give back to it and it's a way to, um, uh, to describe to other people how I see my city. A combination between my brain and my heart. It's about the passion that I'm uh, a part of and it's about the, the, the thought process that got me my passion. It's about melding um, what I think is important to what I feel needs to be said. As important as it is, it seems like it's always an afterthought. But almost everything revolves around the chair I'm sitting in, this building, you know, the colors that they picked on the walls. Like, it's all somebody going like, ooh, this could look nice if we did this. And um, I just wish that more people were into it the way that I feel about it. But it's hard to sort of project that. And when actually making the actual piece of art isn't the hard part. The hard part is getting started, like figuring out the direction, figuring out like um, the message that you're trying to convey or the vibe. Um, those are the, like that's the most time consuming part. Like actually doing the work or putting the mural up is the easiest part because you're just not even thinking. You're just putting things together. Uh, don't be afraid. I think that's one of the hardest things to uh, overcome. And it's, and it's, it's fear of of success and it's fear of failure and it's a fear of, of belonging and, and all those things are, are ways, art, art helps you develop those things where you can get comfortable with them. Um, I think young people at the same time have a fearlessness about the city but they have a fear about the future um, and I think art can bridge that. And you just decide like all right how can I make this even weirder or more fun and then build off of it and then other people see it and they're like okay like there's a little bit of versatility and personality and things that you can kind of um, use to add to the whole overall character itself and um, yeah um, basically I took it as one thing at a time and one bridge at a time and just tried to figure out like what can I do next how can I sort of pursue this or how could I help somebody out or I would put myself out there and it was all just um, the people from the city and I couldn't be happier to be here and work with like people who've done art like Chicago Public Art Group or like they would show me little things and I feel like I learned more being in the city around people than I did when I went to school for it so if anything that would probably be what sort of had a lasting effect on me. So create your art, whether it's dancing, singing, painting or sculpting as long as you're doing what you want to do. I am the best dressed, but I have a relentless drive for progress. So look at me and make progress. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Low key, I'm kind of hungry. But if you look at me, we need unity. This country's falling apart. Art of skateboarding. Art of skateboarding. The art of skateboarding. The art of skateboarding. This program, well, it's mainly one thing is to get to know each other. My name is Michelle. My name is uh, Gerardo Arroyo. My name is Evan Mabril. I'm Gregory Buckner and I'm 17. I'm 17 and my name is Anna. I'm 16 years old. I'm 18 and I'm 17. I'm Caesar and I'm 20 years old. My name is Jumba Gonzalez. I'm uh, the lead instructor for this After School Matters program here at Clemente High School during the summer. It's called The Art of Skateboarding. And what we're doing is teaching teens the basics to filming, editing, and skateboarding. Because uh, there's like a whole other like science to it, you know? And it's a little hard to grasp it if you don't skate. So how he got it set up is basically we got a section of skaters, we got a section of filmers, and we got sections of editors. And like every day we like branch off and like try to make a one big video for the ending process. Uh, the program is more for when I started doing the ASM program, I was doing what was called the club because uh, I'm, I'm always trying to tell kids skateboard because you love it, not because you're trying to get sponsored, not because you're trying to be pro. Just do it because that's what you want to do, you know? And that's, you know, that's the way I grew up. And I couldn't justify like paying a kid to skateboard because I felt like it was like going against what I was trying to like teach, you know? 
but then eventually came up with the concept of, well, not every kid is going to be pro, but there's still tons of viable careers within the skateboard community. So then that's when I started doing an apprenticeship program. We started off doing uh, basically the basics of carpentry, lamination, and graphic design, but instead of making tables or chairs, we're making skateboards from scratch. And then they work together in groups to create a graphic series, and they have to learn how to compromise, they have to learn teamwork, they have to learn all these, they have to learn how to articulate themselves so they can get their ideas across, and it, it just works. So I've been doing that for quite a few years, but then it's summertime, look at how beautiful it is. Who wants to be inside? We have to be inside for that program. So I switched it up, and during the summer we're doing videography because we could be outside. Some of it's inside, obviously, with editing, but um, yeah, the majority of our time we get to go out, visit different skate parks. Uh, when I first started, um, I was kind of shy, you know, because uh, um, I got to meet people I didn't, I didn't really like hang out with, you know, like the type of people. And at first, I was really shy, but uh, because of because of ASM, I got into like. I, I really got uh, the idea of uh, trying to learn and trying to meet other people, you know, like with different styles and all that. So, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's pretty good. I grew up here in Humble Park and doing stuff here in the community. If you ever seen one of the little kids back here in the rear of the plaza at Clemente Skateboarding, that's my story. That's who I am. I am that little kid. I just grew up and uh, haven't let go of that little kid. It's still in me. I still love skateboarding. and. Uh, Skateboarding has been something that's taken me all over the planet. Through skateboarding, I've been able to live in different countries, different cities, meet the most incredible people. And I'm back home in Chicago, so trying to spread the good word and like let other kids know about how much fun it is and what you can do with it. I've been skating for like five or four years. I've been skating for, I think, four years now. Yeah, I started when like seventh grade, so it's probably my fifth year of skating. Like a year. I've been skating for six to seven years. I've been skating for a couple of years. Um, I would say around like four. I've been skating for about about six years, and uh, it's pretty fun, you know. It's pretty fun. I like skateboarding because it's not a team like sport. So if I fail, it doesn't affect anyone else, and it's mostly just on me. Uh, it's like a way I can express myself. And it's something I do for fun. It's just a great way for me to kind of be myself and have fun. It's important for me, despite the money. Uh, it's important to me because it gets me off the, the street gangs and all that stuff. And it gets me uh, into business, you know? Learn something new instead of just being at home playing video games every day. Uh, growing up in the neighborhood, it's real easy to get caught up in stuff in the neighborhood. Uh, Breakdancing and skateboarding, those are the kind of things where you get thirsty and you want to leave your neighborhood. You've already battled everybody in your neighborhood, so you start looking for other people to battle. You've already skated all the curbs or benches in your neighborhood, so went from Humble Park to Logan Square. And the next thing you know, I found out about downtown. And once you go downtown, there's such a huge scene, you realize like skateboarding is global. There's, you're meeting people not just from different parts of the, the city, but from like all over the world, because downtown has like we have one of the best downtowns for skateboarding. All this, it's like a marble metropolis. It's amazing. I think skateboarding is really important to me because it keeps me out of trouble and it helps me be responsible and it helps me have something in mind and keeps me busy. This program impacted my life really, like for the for like for a big part of my life because uh, because of this program. I got into art and I've been having uh, art shows and I've been doing art projects and uh, I've been skating a lot. So if it wasn't because of this program, I wouldn't have met certain people and uh, those people got me uh, opportunities. So it, it has become a really big part of my life right now, so far, you know. I'm still kind of young, but... Uh... To be honest, skateboarding saves lives in a way because like, where I grew up, I live in Inglewood, so... I could have been doing a lot more of this stuff than skateboarding, so I can say that skateboarding can like change some people's lives because it changed a lot of people. I want to say mine specifically, but it changed a lot. So yeah, it's rad because kids come from literally every pocket of the city because there's no other program like this. Thank you.
Yeah, yeah. It's that young yeah, kid yeah. on the mic. Yeah. Kid, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, let's get it. <laughs> Wait, no shade. The class is out, the sky is gone, the sun's vacation. Yeah. When the stars go boom, Brian is gonna need patience. Shoes on them, anti now, need replacement. I draw conclusions, yeah. the stars confusion. Yeah. To conclude, I did some me racing. I've been walking off in the midst of haters. Rappers never buy them, my style, I call them navigators. Then I get you with the greatest fan that like ball. Yeah. Broke ankles gonna fall. Ha. Art will never redraw. No, I'm the best kid of them all. No, you're not. <laughs> yeah, I watch our day. Get treated in the street and in a way yeah. The females hit the details So we still but we raise hell When we roast in the face in the retail So bad, but it's all good Yeah, The fart was too loud In fact, the whole crowd around and we all stood That's nasty, the man's pants leg had like a snappy yeah. Trying to be smooth, lose cool points In the end, got the crappy what? In school, trying to pull a girl with super curse But your face full of acne Damn. To ride a car with only two passengers And you're, you're in, in the backseat back Damn <laughs> Yeah Many people have always looked for this concept we call perfection. As we are pressured by peers, society, and media, we begin to think we can actually capture perfection. However, as we live our everyday lives, we find ourselves doing things to change our natural stance and be what everybody else wants us to be, such as wear makeup, acrylic nails, weave, extensions, and use injections. Many of these activities are the acts of females. Can women honestly be perfect? No, better yet, does perfection actually exist? This is something we all want and need to know. I think perfection exists in everyone's mind, but like not in reality. I don't believe perfection exists. I believe it's a myth. I don't think perfection exists because we're human. Perfection, um does not exist because nothing is perfect. Um, and then if it was, who's, in whose eyes would it be perfect? There's too many people on the earth for anything to be agreed upon as perfect. Um, there is no real perfection. No one's ever going to be perfect. Everyone has their own um, view as far as what is perfection. Um, society sometimes wants to portray perfection in one way but that is, again, society's per, um, way of perceiving perfection. I think a perfect woman is a woman that believes in individuality and just really hones into what she was given by God and owns that and just loves who she is and where she comes from and doesn't uh, fall into the beliefs of other people and what they think she should be. If there was a perfect woman, I think the characteristics she would have would make her a lot like a Disney movie character. I feel like there is no perfect woman, but a woman that embraced her who she was as is and her unique traits her unique personality, um, her character would be as close as perfection can get. I don't think that there's such a thing as a perfect woman. I mean, I guess like, like I said, I think everyone has their own version of what perfection is, but, um, and I think that that's like, I, th I think it's, uh, 
you know, I, I think it's up to people to decide what they think is perfect, but I don't think anyone should have to be upheld to anyone else's standard of perfection. Uh, the perfect woman in my eyes would be somebody that has confidence, um, very high self-esteem, doesn't let anyone deter her from what she wants to accomplish in life, um, somebody that's um, very well orientated in what it is they want to do with themselves and really doesn't let anyone deter them from that, no matter what cost. Over time, the standards for women's appearances have changed drastically. Women have and always will be held to a high standard. Yeah, I do think the standards of perfection has changed. I think back in the 50s and 60s, the perfect woman would be a woman in the household cooking and cleaning and preparing the home, and that was considered a perfect woman. Do I think the standards of perfection have changed over time? Um, yeah, well, what women think of perfection in themselves, I think that's definitely changed over time. I don't know if the standard of perfection has changed, but I think what women think being perfect is has changed. I think the image of beauty has changed over time um, and the fact that what is portrayed in the media um, as far as what women should look like and what's acceptable. I think the standard of perfection has changed over time. We are now set to a very higher standard. We are not the women that used to be uh, staying at home moms. Now we have the careers, we have the children, we have our husbands, we have our friends, and we have to make time for everything. The women have changed significantly throughout history where, I mean, now women have rights, you know, and women can pursue a career and be independent and pretty much do, do whatever they, you know, is all the stuff that men can do. And I, I definitely don't think it was like that in the past. Um, yeah, I think that's a good thing. Uh, I, I don't think, I don't think things like having rights and having freedoms and, you know, being able to be independent, like I think those things should be gender neutral. You know, it, it, it shouldn't matter if you're a man or a woman. Absolutely. I think that the media's lack of diversity affects women and everybody else in the world. It's had a personal effect on me. So as a child growing up, I felt unpretty and I used to stare in the mirror for hours trying to imagine what I would look like with straight hair and um, if I would be better if I wasn't as smart as I was. I definitely think the media's lack of diversity has a lot of a lot to do with how women think of themselves. Um, I, I mean, not just women, but everybody. What everybody thinks of themselves, they want to they want to see who they are reflected in the media they consume. So, I don't think anyone's like equally represented in the media. Um, you know, I, I think they try. Like I said, I, I think they try to create this idea of perfection based on whatever they think that is the perfect body, or um, and I, I think it's. You know, if you don't see people that look like you in the media, it's just kind of weird. You know, you probably walk around wondering, like, why am I being underrepresented? Is there something wrong with me? Uh, I think I think it can create that effect. Uh, in the media, no. Now the media does put a lot of pressure on a woman to be perfect and a superwoman, and we're supposed to juggle all these things at once and really not complain about it. Media's portrayal of women affects me on a daily basis. I'm always thinking about what people will think of me when I enter into a room, if they'll prejudge me because of how I look or how I act, and will they just fit me into this one particular box because they assume I'm supposed to be a certain way because of how women are portrayed on media. I think the media portrays women in a very rigid, uh, one-sided view. Um, which is the standard of a Caucasian woman um, with long blonde hair, thin blue eyes, um, and it's been portrayed in the media as, as long as I can remember. I think women are portrayed positively in the media. Um, we really don't want to see the bad side of women because a woman is most of the time a superwoman. We do everything. We have our household, we have our careers, we have our friends, we have a social life. Sometimes I do feel like I need to be perfect um, and then I realize that it's not 
important and that's um, it's very freeing to let go of the image of perfection in the media and I feel like I could function better without it so I just let all that go I try to let it go when I walk out the door worry about it yes but I get to the point you know that part in the princess diaries where she's like trying to get pretty and it's like well that's as good as it's gonna get because there's you can't you just can't I do not worry about being perfect when I leave the house um, when it when I work I try to do my best work um, it's never going to be perfect so I, I try to do the best that I can and I try to be like you know the best human being that I can but no, I don't think I ever try to be perfect. For the younger women out there, uh, I would say to just not pay attention to what the media puts out there as far as what beautiful is or what perfection is. It's really everyone's own special definition. Everyone has their own views. Um, whatever it is that they want to do, they should just go for it. Um, the physical part, as long as you feel you're healthy, as long as you feel comfortable in your skin, as long as you're not feeling pressured to be a certain size. Just don't get caught up in the hype. It's just hype and the media is pushing um, unrealistic goals and um, standards and to never try to fit the mold because it's gonna change and then you'll never be able to fit ever because it will keep changing and you won't be able to keep up. So just be true to who you are, love yourself, love the body you're in, love the skin that you're in, and keep going.